short term, there was an earnings shortfall. They had to cut estimates. Admit that uh, we're looking five years out. We're looking at one of the biggest stories in healthcare, a category killer. Uh, during the next five to 10 years. What do your analysts think Teladoc is worth per share? It is currently trading at 34. And I, I ask in part because all of the factors you cite while compelling get to the heart of ARC's differentiation, which is your research process. Teladoc bought Livongo for $18.5 billion and just took a $6.5 billion goodwill write down. So why should we trust Teladoc's uh, business model and some of the choices that they've made? And what does ARK K think this stock intrinsic value is? Uh, so Livongo was a very, we, we don't like growth by acquisition generally, but Livongo uh, was a very important piece of the puzzle uh, for uh, Teladoc to acquire. Uh, it covers chronic, uh, chronic illnesses. And uh, whereas Teladoc was much more focused on acute illnesses, emergency room and so forth. Uh, so it needed that uh, recurring revenue base. Uh, and the other thing that, uh, that Legon Livongo brought was a huge amount of data. This is a data story as all artificial intelligence winner take most opportunities are. Uh, and we have two data science organizations coming together, Teladoc, Teladoc and Livongo. They brought in Klaus Jensen from Memorial Sloan Kettering to run it. And very interestingly, they just hired a, a, a woman from AWS. She led life sciences at AWS and a, AWS has the lion's share of, uh, of, life, of the life sciences market. She chose, of all companies out there, to join, uh, to join Teladoc. She, her background is United Health, j and &J, uh, and then AWS, uh, where she helped build out that life sciences business. Teladoc is thinking big. You ask us, uh, what is our price target out there? Well, as as Simon Barnett, uh, who is one of the most brilliant analysts uh, out there in this space, uh, was as he was looking at his model and, and looking at how far ahead uh, they are on the enterprise side, far ahead relative to our expectations. And remember, enterprise B2B is where we think this is going to, this story is going to fly. Um, he, he was adjusting his model and he said, you know, I can't even throw out this number. We'll haircut it by 50%. Uh, but he, he sees, uh, again, preliminary estimates uh, uh, at, at one day after this quarter, but again, we've got a long-term point of view, a tenfold increase. This is like Amazon. Remember Amazon in the day. What, it, it IPO'd at 18 uh, in 1997, went to 118, and then in the crisis, uh, round trip back to 18. Today, mm -hmm. it's at 2,500, even after its drop today. We see Teladoc uh, in the same uh, league as an Amazon. And, you know, we also have experience with controversy. Uh, our first big source of controversy was Bitcoin in 2015, when it was $250. Now it's almost $40,000. Tesla, you know, we were fighting that battle uh, for a very long time. Uh, and uh, it, it, it went from $30 in, in uh, 30 uh, on the split stock, I get a bit mixed up, yeah. uh, to where it is today, $1,000. So these are big ideas. I think we're one of the few organizations of financial organizations in the world focus solely on disruptive innovation. This is our bread and butter. And because most of our stocks are not in broad-based benchmarks, uh, most analysts don't feel the need to cover them uh, that closely. Sure. Uh, so we are doing something, we are fulfilling, we believe, an unmet need, helping uh, investors and advisors to diversify portfolios and incorporate disruptive innovation that is going to unearth uh, the traditional world order is going to disrupt it. And, uh, and so we're a good diversifier and a hedge against uh, the creative destruction uh, that disruptive innovation and is going to. To be clear, cause. you're saying that at $35 today, your analysts think Teladoc is worth $350 a share potentially. So when you say there's a five-year time horizon, those are the kinds of 
values um, that you're pitching to the investors who are kind of sticking around to still see this story out. Let me ask you mm -hmm. something. Have, have you ever thought that there was an investment, a holding that you overpaid for, uh, a, a mistake, a research mistake perhaps that, you know, was later borne out by an earnings power that didn't match up to expectations? Or has every single holding, in your opinion, been either a success or an unproven success where investors just have to wait a few more years to see better returns? Yeah, I think a lot of people understand when we when they hear us talk with such conviction uh, uh, about our stocks, and the conviction is born out of research. Um, they think uh, that that conviction translates into perhaps arrogance or hubris that we can never be wrong. That is not true. Uh, in fact, if we do, we we make mistakes all the time. If you don't take risk, you're not going to be able to generate the returns. Uh, we have taken it since last February, uh, the number of stocks in our flagship portfolio, ARKK, uh, peaked at uh, 58 uh, and is now 35. So there are 23 names uh, that we took out of the portfolio saying, you know what, uh, uh, we're not as confident in our assumptions or we don't like uh, this management uh, turnover, uh, management uh, changes we watch like a hawk, and that's why I mentioned those on Teladoc. Mm -hmm. We're very impressed with the talent they're attracting. So no, we are, we, we are going to be wrong. Uh, we are, I'm sure we have mistakes in the portfolio now. Uh, and many people would say, well, look at the stock price. It's a, a, a for ARKK, it's been decimated. It's been decimated uh, and it's true our, our our stocks and our portfolios as though it is 1999 when there were a lot of companies that were uh, uh, that were founded that that actually failed uh, that that they, they were chasing a dream that is becoming a reality right now and we are investing in that reality even though many investors unlike the late 90s are running away from innovation running into their benchmarks and uh and and selling our stocks final question you mentioned management uh do you think elon musk is done selling his uh tesla shares in order to fund the buyout of twitter you've been continually obviously bullish on tesla we're keeping it within that 10 percent holding range uh, more bearish on Twitter, as I understand it. So uh, can you just give us your updated thoughts on both stocks, especially in light of the selling pressure on Tesla that's resulted from this? Uh, yes, and, and uh, we, we post our trades at the end of every day, and you'll see that uh, we have been selling down Tesla, but it's still our largest position, 9.5% in the portfolio. Uh, when we see uh, Tesla down you know, 20% from its high, and we see our some of our other stocks down 60, 70%. Uh, 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 now there's more optimism with Tesla. It's in a, it's in the indexes now, so it gets more support. We're going to make that kind kind of trade, but our confidence in what Tesla's kind of trades? You mean you're following, you're selling out of it because of the price action in some of the smaller, more beaten down stocks? Yeah. So portfolio management means. Uh, if a stock is, uh, especially over the past year and a half, Tesla uh, has been a moonshot, mm -hmm. uh, and our confidence is very high, but it is it is maintained uh, its valuation relative to some of the other names in which our confidence also have in, has increased. Uh, so Tesla, our, we have not lost any confidence in Tesla at all, and uh, understand that uh, Elon Musk is diversifying as he should. He has an incredible amount of his net worth in, in Tesla, and he feels very strongly about Twitter. So, And we're very interested in what he's going to do with Twitter. We just had a brainstorm about it, and uh, uh, we, think, uh, we think he could do some magnificent uh, things with it uh, as a private company, you know, reorganizing the model in some way um, and opening up the algorithm. So uh, fascinated by that. Um, uh, so, you know, in terms of Twitter, what's ironic here, our greatest fear for our portfolio right now is that uh, our names will be uh, taken out. They'll be acquired. They are selling at bargain basement prices. If you give us a five-year investment time horizon, we will maintain that they are deep value names. So our fear 
is that they're going to be taken out. Uh, now, t uh, 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 Elon is taking out Twitter personally, which is even more interesting. We wouldn't have expected that. Uh, but, you know, Elon has done great things for the, uh, the transportation space, for space travel itself, or the space interconnectivity. Yeah. And uh, we expect, we would, we would place a high degree of confidence that he'll do very well with Twitter. We all have to go, but so to be clear, are you done selling your Tesla position at this point? Well, I can never say never. You know, if Tesla went up 30 percent and, and some of our other stocks went down 20 percent, that would be a natural trade for us to make. But it would still probably stay uh, as the largest name in the portfolio. Kathy Wood, thank you for your time today. We appreciate it very, very much. Kathy Wood is the CEO and CIO of ARK Invest. Still ahead on the exchange, we'll talk about how many rate hikes are priced into the market and if the Fed would be any closer to a full point.